<laughs> no audio, only video. I swear video. I'm paying attention. I do pay attention <laughs> in these meetings. Hey, everybody. I'm Kai Rizdal. Welcome back to Make Me Smart, making today make sense every time we open our mouths. Every That's time. right. Although I think he might have just called our podcast a meeting, which is kind of sad for me. Okay, everybody. <laughs> it's time for a meeting. Fire up the Zoom. Yeah. It is. Uh, we think it's a meeting because we did fire up the Zoom. It's Happy Hour Friday, also known as Economics on Tap, which means there's video. The live stream is up there and is. running. Thanks to everyone joining us, whether you're uh, finding us you know, later uh, via download or live on YouTube or on Discord where the chat is Man. hopping. I was in the wrong channel. Now I'm in the Economics on. on Tap channel. It's all happening. We got it all going on. Holy cow. All uh, happening. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, Are there Crocs? Sure the Crocs? There, I did an interview with the CEO of Crocs yesterday in which I voiced my disdain for that particular brand of footwear. And the of CEO of the company basically challenged me to uh, wear a pair of Crocs to the office. And I said, oh, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. So, See, again, again, the difference between you and I is on display because I did an interview with the CEO of Crocs once when you were out of town, like several years ago when Crocs were just starting to come back. And I was like, Crocs are kind of mm -hmm. back, aren't they? And he was like, yeah, totally. And then I bought some for me and my son. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was well, like, so I wait, guess are they're they totally super back. Are they comfortable? They're like pretty super comfortable? comfortable. Yeah. They're yeah. pretty comfortable. I, I, will, I yeah. won't say that I wear them around as much as I wear my like slip on mule slipper type things. Yeah. yeah. But uh, they yeah. are comfortable though. I don't like the like me personally. I'm not a big fan of the little nubby bottom. That's always been my one complaint oh. about Crocs. Yeah. All right. No I kidding. Have I wish I'd known it yesterday. I'd have, brought it, I'd, I'd have brought it up in CEO. Uh, all right. But we're not here to talk about feet or shoes. That's an entirely oh. different podcast. It uh, got weird. We're, we're, here, we're here to do a little news. Uh, man, I'm going to have to open the windows here in a minute because I am sweating open already. Um, it, it. It's uh, happy hour on tap. So uh, what are you drinking? And I will fess up. I'm teetotaling today. I'm having a good old fashioned Canada dry. Because I got some stuff Which, to do later on, and I need to be alert. Be behind the scenes, you should know. I immediately asked him if he had a tummy ache, and he said no. Um, yeah, I'm, because I'm somebody's fine. mom is in here. I'm having a little tequila while Kai opens the window, and by little tequila, yeah. I mean I was just saying that uh, I brought up the entire bottle to the garage just so I could sort of pour it before the show. Kirkland, Costco size tequila. You, we should just get you a straw. It's my jam. It's my jam for today. Like a, like a, like a two uh, foot straw. It, I know it's, you know, up. it's, it's getting warm <laughs> in the various home studios. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Leslie Underwood totally yeah. agrees with me about the nubby bottom. It's just not the. Oh, well, there you go. All right. Let's see. No Kimberly kidding. Adams right here in the YouTube chat, Kimberly. having pomegranate juice and Midori because she still has it. Cause Midori nice. is hard to get rid of. <laughs> it's the true. beautiful <laughs> part about Kimberly is she's like, what do I have in my closet and or my cabinet and what can I make out of it? And how do I turn it into like a great cocktail? Exactly. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. I have to add some ice yeah. in my little freezer. So there's that. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Um, okay. So uh, right. we'll do a little news. We'll do a little um, half empty, half full or half full, half empty. However you want to sequence those. Um, and then we'll move along. Yes. Uh, I, Let's do I the begin news. My news choices today. I begin them with tales of failure. Uh, one on behalf of the media of the United States, and I'm mm -hmm. going to call out NBC News here, but lots and lots of others have been doing it. And here's the big blaring headline from NBC News earlier today. Breakthrough COVID cases, at least 125,000 fully vaccinated Americans have tested positive. That's the headline. Big, fat, scary headline. And then in much smaller type that uh, nobody will see as they scroll through on their phones, the 125,000 breakthrough cases in 38 states represent less than 0.08% of the 165 million plus people fully vaccinated since January. And that's just a fail. I get that yeah. we're worried about Delta and I get that it's scary and I get that it's, you know, more contagious and there are breakthroughs and all of these things, but media do better, please. Yep. And I will, I will lump us in there. We got to, it's just too important yeah. and there's too much mis and disinformation for us to get stupid stuff like this wrong. It's That's absurd. It is absolutely yeah. absurd. It represents, in fact, 0.03% yeah. of the entire U.S. population. Uh, yeah. And then, yes, 0.08% of, uh, and, okay, well, that's so funny, because if you start clicking my links down here, what you'll see is it's the same thing. Oh, that's funny. Including, that funny. Sorry, I didn't see that. exactly, including an emergency yeah. medicine doctor tweeting uh, about the headline in the Washington Post today, CDC study 
shows three fourths of people infected in Massachusetts yeah. COVID nineteen outbreak were vaccinated. Yeah, and this doctor it's says, crazy. "Please stop with these headlines because more importantly, only four fully vaccinated people were hospitalized. None of them yep. dies." This shows, he writes, that vaccines protect against serious illness, but don't prevent transmission. So wear a mask. The only thing that our profession, and I'm just going to have to say our profession and own yeah. the fact that we're a part yeah. of it, even though it's a tough time to be doing that because we keep falling into the exact same traps. We're only yeah. covering, I mean, literally, I actually said to my brother today, I was like, I'm pretty sure that every single breakthrough case that exists has now been spoken to and reported on the media. I mean, granted, <laughs> this right. is likely. One, that's right. So, Each right, person. like, so it seems like they're yeah. super common, but actually we've just heard about all of them. So right. we're only reporting on breakthrough cases. And look, that is probably an undercount. And even if it is an undercount, it's still remarkable protection by the vaccines. Yep. The the What these headlines are doing is giving more fodder to people who are saying vaccines don't work or why should I take it? Because it turns out I'll just get it and pass it on anyway, even though that yep. is still far, 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 far less likely. I think Bob Wachter was tweeting that it's like you're maybe only you're an eighth as likely to get it at all, let alone pass mm -hmm. it on. And it's just leading to these like these bizarrely polarized narratives. If you only cover Just, things that 125,000 people are doing, it, yeah. it's like we only cover that. And then we only cover the people who refuse to uh, take the vaccine. And then we make a big, huge deal out of, you know, things like Florida Governor Ron DeSantis effectively getting a ton more attention for Crazy. vowing to reject yeah. mask mandates for school aged students on Friday. Yeah. This is also the guy who like sued social media platforms for censorship and what is and what is mm -hmm. a full-on quixotic windmill situation like don't cover that well, don't cover it's, it it's, it's i want to be it's it's the i want to be president situation is what that was i mean right what, and i want to be what, president by be, by increasingly marginalizing myself because i know that it will totally work on right. the press and it will completely get people on my side you bet like i can't believe how badly we're still doing i really cannot this it's many terrible. years later it is terrible. Yeah. And our profession yeah. should be ashamed. It is terrible. Well, our better. Friday's just like, I Be get so one sip of tequila and then rant. <laughs> It's super I don't know if, if I had something <laughs> in this ginger ale, I'd, I'd be going with you. I'd be going with you. I mean, um, all right. So that's my, my news item. Number one story of failure. My news item. Number yep. two story of failure is a tweet from Sarah Ferris. She covers uh, Congress for Politico and she tweeted 20 minutes ago. She said house has adjourned and the lights have literally dimmed as August recess officially begins. Now that's important because one of the things that Congress did not do on the way out of town, and let me tell you now that the next scheduled vote in the House of Representatives is the middle of September, September, okay? One of the things they did not do is extend the eviction moratorium, which expires oh. tomorrow. And there are 15 million people in this economy who are behind on their rents. And of that, some fraction, disproportionately, by the way, people of color are now staring down the barrel of eviction. And Congress has left. They've gone. They took off. Wow. So that's story number two of failure. Yeah. Yep. Craziness. Yeah. Craziness. Yeah. And, and and look, the Congress of both parties, right, they have come together in the last uh, year and done some remarkable things. The bipartisanship has obviously waned as the administration has changed hands. But, but look, this is a failure to recognize the ongoing crisis. Because everybody's like, oh, yeah, the pandemic's over and this and that. We talked about this the other day. Number one, the pandemic's not over. Number two, the economic effects are also not over. And they're lasting now beyond the capacity of some of these programs. And that's yeah. where we are. Yeah. So a little failure in the news today. A lot of failure in the news today. Yeah. I mean, when one of these institutions does not hold the other to account you can see why and vice versa you can see why nothing gets done yeah. doesn't have to because yeah. you can just play to the press right this is a whole this right. is a whole other podcast than you guys were expecting whole I'm other sure. podcast. all right okay yikes okay huh. you know what all it's right. friday let's, yeah we've got our drinks let's just let's play a game let's play a game.
Uh, this is the game, half full, half empty. The game where we give you our predictions on various topics. Uh, thanks to our host, Drew Jostad. What do we got? Take it away. All right. Get us the, started. the irony is thick with the first one here. Are we half full or half <laughs> empty on the alcohol shortage? <laughs> Is it is that uh, it is, is that actually happening? a supply chain thing? It is it is a real thing. Yeah, we did this story the other day on the show. It's a real thing. It's a real thing. There are beer shortages and alcohol shortages. Obviously, I'm half empty. I need it needs to be full. Present day's uh, beverages notwithstanding, we need to fix this. Dang, times are getting hard again. Yeah, it's for real. Uh, so that, we're going that big bottle of Gila Molly one, that's, that's 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 worth its weight in you know gold. Oh my goodness. Well, it's a good thing uh, that I'm a bit of a hoarder. <laughs> I did not know that. I will say I'm actually half full in the sense that there is no chance, and this is not necessarily a good thing because Americans are drinking way too much, but I feel like there's no chance that America is going to let an actual shortage occur. There's going to be, I don't know. One never knows. Bootlegging, hooch. I'm going to make some hooch. I'm going to make some hooch in the backyard. A little bat, little bathtub gin, a little bathtub gin. I'm excited. I'm excited gin. for the return of uh, moonshine. I'm half full. Let's do it. Let's yeah, moonshine right. it up. Your your, your front <laughs> your frontiers woman is coming out. All right, Drew. Next, <laughs> are you half full or half empty on any antitrust regulation coming from the FTC? Oh, very interesting. Yeah, I'm gonna let you go first. I'm soup. I'm uh, I'm half empty. Really. Mm -hmm. You don't think it's going to happen? Yep. I do not. I think that there, uh, I think that agency is profoundly understaffed. I think there has been a lot of uh, heat about uh, everything that they're going to be able to do, but not a lot of light in terms of, I mean, they already got had a huge setback in the form of the federal judge dismissing the case against Facebook. And then the FTC said, whoa, whoa, okay, we're going to need more time to refile that case because we're so understaffed think they're going to run headlong into judges, into delaying tactics like Facebook and Google saying, oh, you need to, or Amazon saying, you're going to, Lena Khan's going to have to recuse herself from these cases. And I think the bog is going to be too thick for them to make any progress. Wow. Anytime soon. Wow. But, but Lena Khan and all that stuff she wrote and all the high hopes and all the, everybody was look out Silicon Valley and Facebook. You're in the, not, you're not, you're not having that. I'm just not having it. And you know what? This is a, another example of a thing that we keep on talking about because you know whose job it is to do this? Congress. Congress. Oh, yeah. Like the fact that we keep yeah. leaving this to like unelected agencies that are totally understaffed and don't have any teeth. One of the things the FTC said in a, its a hearing before Congress just this week was, hey, you know what we really need is for somebody to restore uh, the ability for us to collect monetary recompense. Yeah which yeah. was just stripped away from the FTC. They said, you need, you know, there, there's some other piece of authority that they need to go back and look at past deals. Right now, the, FT, the FTC doesn't even have the authority to do the things that it's saying it wants to do. It's almost wow. like it's a weird celebrity appointment. And then meanwhile, by the way, the FTC, which is an agency that has a lot of teeth, doesn't even have a permanent chair yet. I'm not buying it. In fact, if anything, I feel like we're getting a little bit snookered in a PR way here. I don't know, I'm fired up today. I mean, uh, I was just gonna say, I was just gonna say, whoa, Drew, next next <laughs> one, because she's just on a dare. <laughs> okay, I don't know Drew, what's happening. To me. All right, I got it's more all, regulation. More regulation. <sighs> oh man, the okay. FAA regulating space flight. Oh, see, I think that's bunkus. Truly, I do. I, I don't understand where the FAA gets off doing the whole. Oh, you're not officially an astronaut, and we're not going to give you astronaut wings go to hell honestly <gasps> right what? i mean seriously Who did they say couldn't? there's the line what did they better not have said that that old aviator lady can't have astronaut wings I'm uh not yeah that at uh, all. she was in bezos's plane yeah they did yeah. say that <gasps> yeah um right so, unelected bureaucrats. I don't understand where the here. FAA gets un unelected bureaucrats <laughs> that's right i think if you go above the carmen line you, you can call yourself an astronaut. I don't I don't think those designator wing things and all that jazz, I don't think it applies to civilians. All right, so here comes my, my background. I don't think it applies to civilians. I think if you're a designated mm -hmm. aviator by a, a branch of the government that's qualified to designate aviators, uh, which I understand includes the FAA, then, then you get um, wings. But if you're not, you don't. Uh, yeah, 
Boo. Opposed. I'm with Kai. I'm half empty. I would also like okay. to point out that the Discord has, uh, they literally have little graphics for full and empty. I mean, wow. our Discord is just next level. It's next level. It's wonderful. So when we when they when we say something, when Drew offers the topic, then the little images come up empty, empty, empty. So good. Wait, hang on a minute. Don't do do not go anywhere. I'm not ready for the next one yet. Hang on. Because you're open up Discord. Hang on. You got this. No, I'm looking up Bunkus. Somebody. Oh, Bunkum. Right in Minneapolis. I got it wrong. I got it wrong. All right. Anyway, go ahead. Oh, it's Bunkum. I was wondering about Bunkus. It's Bunkum. Not I, Bunkus sounds better. But anyway, all right, Drew. Sorry to cut you off. Go ahead. Okay. Yes. Please. A certain aforementioned footwear company is suing copycats. How are we half full or half empty on Crocs defending their intellectual property? Uh, I, I think all companies should protect their intellectual property. I, I think they should definitely do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just I think, I you know, like it's a system that yeah. gets a little out of hand and we yeah. have extended a culture of ownership past the point where we necessarily need to, but at the same time, yeah. if you don't, defend your intellect. I mean, you have to. Legally, you have to defend it. Otherwise, you lose the rights to your trademark. Otherwise, so. you lose it. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, weirdly, isn't it like an incredible, like a super aggressive protector of intellectual property is pop sockets. You know, the little stick on things on the phone. Wow. We had make me smart ones. Are they still a thing? I know we did. It's are like a, a one thing? man band. I did see some in, in mm -hmm. Target the other day and I was like, are those still a thing? So maybe. Well, I guess so. Anyway, I, I guess, you know, in a, in a business kind of way we're half full yeah yeah half full okay. that's it that's it i thought we had one more i always think we have one more oh well i know me too huh. <sighs> so all right so note to producers let's make five please shall we thank you uh oh, oh yeah. okay yeah, there's gotta that's, be five. It. <laughs> that's it just... for us today uh <laughs> We're just punchy I'm back, um, and pissed off. <laughs> a little bit. Just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. It's it's vacation is so close. Speaking of which, Molly's gone uh -huh. the next two. So here's the way it goes. Molly's gone for the next two weeks. Now, are you gone, gone, or are you working on your tippy top secret project? Uh, a little which bit. Which is, of I guess, not so tippy top secret anymore. Okay. All right. Okay. A little bit. Uh, of so Molly's gone. I'm gone. Molly's out for two weeks. I'm actually on vacation. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Molly's out for the next two weeks. I am in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday with Kimberly. Then I'm out for the duration of Molly's absence. And Kimberly's on with a rotating cast of Euler and Megan McCarty Carino. Just so all y'all know what's going on. So it is going to be fun. Just one, just wanted to say that. Uh, all right. But we still do need your comments, your questions, uh, your, your uh, uh, very carefully crafted critiques. Answers, of course, to the Make Me Smart questions. Send us an email or a voice memo. Make me smart at marketplace.org. Or you can just give us a phone call. 508-827-6278, 508-U-B-SMART. So there you go. There so you go. good. Just a reminder <clears throat> that we didn't even do that on purpose, the U-B smart thing. It was a happy accident. That's how blessed our show is. Make Me Smart is produced by Marissa Cabrera. Today's episode was engineered by Drew Jostad, engineered by and starring Drew Jostad. Stephen Beyond produces our favorite game, half full, half empty, no pressure though, but we want five. And the YouTube live stream. <laughs> He's not even on the staff of the show. I'm like, give us more. I know, more, we're more. just like, um, more, 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 more. Bridget Bodner is the senior producer of this podcast. The executive director of On Demand is Sitara Nieves. And this is where I click over the Slack to make sure I have To see if she's in there. I know. Right? Aw, friends, you're so Thank nice. You. Everyone's, everyone's so sad about vacation, which I appreciate. However, you are in great hands. I'm kind of excited to hear some Andy yeah. Euler shows while the Olympics are happening. Oh, no joke, right? Right? Our no sports joke. guy. Laura, Laura Cardaro. Stuff. I'm late. Start over. No, we can't do that. Oh, <laughs> <sighs> I love how you guys, too, are assuming that I'm sauced <laughs> when I've had the two, two sips uh, of tequila.